finding a quicker route to your destination. Would you like me to reply to the email? How can I help How you? How can I help you? How can I help How you? How can I help you? The role of artificial intelligence seems to be pervading many, many aspects of life, some that are quite surprising and raise some concerns. User recognized. Hello, Dave. As AI is being broadly deployed in the world, the kinds of problems that we are dealing with are changing. Finding recommendations based on your viewing history. We're increasingly finding these situations where AI systems have to make these decisions that in our eyes have a significant moral component. Isolating Tuma. We really need to think about how to encode those priorities in the algorithm itself. Most of the time, despite what we like to think, we make our moral judgments based on intuition and emotion. We get tired and we lose cognitive resources and emotional resources. So by the end of a day, you often can't make the decisions as well as when you started. So as technology started to develop and it started to become possible to start thinking about something else making a moral ju judgment, it was a very natural switch to think, how could we use the developing technology to make us make better moral judgments? I think there is a single morality that applies to all humans. One, reducing harm to others and respecting other people's rights. So you want to reduce the amount of harm that people suffer in their lives, but you want to do it in a way that doesn't violate the rights of individuals along the path. My response is no, I don't think there is, but it doesn't bother me because everyone has some sense of what morality for them is. You define it. Morality is a very personal, thing. Our project is dedicated to developing a moral artificial intelligence with a small eye rather than a big eye. So we're not trying to create something that is equal to human. It is nowhere near ready for real practice. We're starting to think about it now because it'll take a long time to think about it. The actual implementation will be decades away. We're trying to create something that can help solve problems. What we are putting in there is what humans think is morality, not what the machine thinks is morality. Whatever the machine thinks is morality is what we define for it. We want the computer to reflect human morality in general rather than a particular individual. And that's what our program allows us to do because we can take the data from large numbers of humans, we can develop an algorithm that predicts what most humans would say. An example that we have focused on is kidney exchanges. Sometimes when you're distributing kidneys to potential recipients, you have to decide which one gets it because you've got one kidney and lots of potential recipients. So should you give it to younger people rather than older people? What if the person has been on the waiting list longer than another person? People's intuitions obviously disagree. Some people would, for example, say that you should take into account whether a patient has dependents, like small children that they're taking care of, and other people would say that you should not take that into account. What if they're responsible to a certain extent for their own kidney problems because they did something that helped cause those problems? There are lots of different features that people might take to be morally relevant. And yet, when people think about those, they might forget one of those. They might misunderstand one of those. Why does it matter whether someone's younger or older? Is that just all about life expectancy? And they might get confused by the multitude of different morally relevant features. The machine can give you a better sense of which judgments humans would make if they considered all the morally relevant features. We are not trying to take our favorite moral theory, build it into a machine, have it apply to problems and have everybody agree with us. That's not the goal at all. Our project looks at survey data about what a wide variety of people take to be morally relevant features and then develops an algorithm to determine how those different features interact. And then the algorithm predicts which judgments humans would make. We don't want the computer to do the same thing in every circumstance. We want it to be sensitive to those particular variations. The data shows that 
Most people, they've got biases that are gonna affect their daily lives, even though they're not aware of them, and even though they think they're wrong. And so it's not unusual to think that these hospital administrators would have biases that are affecting their decisions. It happens to all of us, we're all human, and the computer can help us figure out when it's happening and then correct for it. These committees are very busy. So let's suppose they have to make 10 different decisions in a meeting and they're 10 people and they've got an hour. You get all of this information from all these different people, what their medical data is, who might be uh, matched with who, and now you have to sort through this enormous number of people and figure out what is the best way to match them all together. Even if what best means is just maximizing the number of people that get a kidney, this quickly becomes very overwhelming. So this is where algorithms come in, because they don't mind searching through a large space of possible alternatives. Then the computer says, according to the values that you've expressed in the past, we think you ought to do this, given your values corrected for biases and ignorance and confusion. Then they can say, oh, of those 10 cases, there are only two where we're disagreeing with the computer. The human still has to make the decision, but the computer can say, this is the decision that you would make, given your values and the things that you yourself take to be morally relevant, given them interacting in the way that you yourself take to be appropriate and getting rid of all those biases that you yourself take to be features that should not figure into your moral judgments. There need to be multiple different ways that the AI can give you feedback. So one should be, are you being consistent with your own choices, your own behavior? And the other should be, are you being consistent with certain groups that you might care about? And one might be your local group, another might be your profession, another might be the population as a whole. And then, if the judgment you think is right or wrong disagrees with the computer, now you've got a problem. But if it agrees, you feel okay. The computer has helped me confirm I'm gonna be more confident. One upside is that it's going to improve human moral judgment. I've been on these hospital ethics committees before and you reach a consensus, but you still think, I don't know, it was a tough case. Other upsides is if there are fewer mistakes, then the people who need the kidneys and who deserve the kidneys are gonna be more likely to get them. You're also going to have people who maybe they don't deserve it as much now, but they've got a special condition which makes it very unlikely they'll get matched in the future. The goal is to help the committee make the judgments according to the features that they themselves take to be morally relevant. No, we're not building a hell. Notice that Hal went against what Dave thought was the right thing. What are you talking about, Hal? Now we've got to ask, wait a minute, why do we trust Dave? We have certain empathy for Dave because we're both humans, but humans make mistakes too. It can only be attributable to human error. So let's say there are two days. One where Dave is making a moral judgment about what ought to be done that almost all other humans would agree with. Hello, Hal, do you read me? Well, then we don't want the computer to go against it. But if Dave is making a decision that's gonna be good for Dave, but contrary to everybody else, then maybe we want Hal to stop it. So what's the decision there? We want a Hal that is going to reflect what most or almost all humans would think is the morally right thing to do. So most AI systems today, even the very successful ones, are still very narrow in that they focus on a very particular domain. You might think about AlphaGo. So AlphaGo is exceptionally good at playing Go, but it cannot play chess at all. Because we are making an artificial intelligence with a small eye, we're training this intelligence. So it's always gonna have the same goal. If you're using machine learning and deep learning techniques, and you've specified as its goal that it should develop an algorithm that best mimics human morality, then that makes it unlikely to all of a sudden start making up its own morality. Four years ago, the idea of self-driving cars still sounded a little nuts. And now everyone accepts it as an inevitability. And so I think before the idea of a moral artificial intelligence sounded nuts, and now people, I think, will be more open to it.
with enough uh, work on the AI, if it works at a hospital board, then in theory we should be able to find ways to design an AI that could be generalized to other situations as well. I think there's a lot of opportunity here to do good for the world. I think there are real things to worry about. Technological unemployment, autonomous weapons systems, large-scale surveillance. These are all issues tied to AI. In large part, that is up to us as humanity to determine how we're going to use this technology. Look at all the things that computers have been able to do in the last 10 years, 20 years. And so yes, I'm an optimist about what they'll be able to accomplish in years to come. These programs will not reduce our understanding of morality. Instead, it will improve and enhance our understanding of morality and also enhance the judgments that we make.